so we are live Sati, welcome thank you for coming out today thank uh, you thank you for inviting me yeah well you are welcome <laughs> uh how are you doing pretty good thanks a lot what about you okay i'm pretty excited about the podcast <laughs> tell me how much time have you been studying english well uh i had my first english lesson uh when i was actually five five uh -huh. years old mm -hmm. um yeah i went to school pretty early um and yeah but i like the f i guess if we count all together it would be around 15 years 15 years well wow, it's like Something what like mo motivated you from the from the beginning um well my very first motivation was my dad uh -huh. he kind of always taught me from the very young age that english is important you should learn english and then oh i remember um I have cousins, uh, I'm in, I have a huge Armenian family, mm -hmm. and uh, some of my cousins, they were actually from, from England. And when we all met all together in Armenia, they would always speak English together. And I, at, at that time, I was around like 10 years old, I think. And I was always so motivated by that. And I was like, I want to grow up and I want to be like them. I want to speak English as well. So were I don't know. It's just in general. Uh, were I you really able to speak it. English when you were 10 or it just was? Uh, I think even younger. I always I wanted to speak English since I was five, like uh -huh. since my dad told uh -huh. me. I, 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 I like I do remember that uh, I have that memory uh, in my in my mind uh -huh. where my dad speaks to me like he says something at the time. He, he said like a few words, but at the time it was like, oh, wow, <laughs> he, yeah. So um, I guess I wanted to speak English somewhere around five, six, seven. But how much time then. did it take to develop this skill to, to, oh. be able to be able to speak like two, three, four years? And how did you study like tell about this process? Well, um, I really wanted to learn English, but um, at my I went to school when I was five and at that time we didn't really have that great of teachers mm -hmm. and then so that my my uh, desire mm -hmm. to learn English was kind of unsatisfied and um, I the moment when I felt like that's it uh, was um, at seventh grade when we got a new teacher uh, she's actually the reason why I have uh, the English I have right now mm -hmm. she's an amazing teacher she's the best ever uh, she always had very interactive lessons. She would. Um, she was just amazing. Did you did you try to study on your own, or it was just only in school? Well, yeah, I d as I said, I always liked English, so mm, I tried to. I remember, I I would read. I would um, read the lyrics to songs, something mm -hmm. like that. But it was not really that great. But like the the huge boost was when we got. Um, this teacher? Uh, yes, this uh -huh. teacher, Tatiana Alexeyevna, she's the best. Uh -huh. uh, can you can you remember how much time did it take to understand native speakers? Like when you first had this Ooh, experience, um, when you just okay. listened to something, oh, so, I can understand everything without translating mm, my native language. All right. It's kind of hard, you know? I think probably eighth grade. Uh, so... so I'm, I'm 11, 11 12, 12 years old the, mm. or, or earlier. Eighth grade. I, I think, think I was like fifteen. Fifteen. Like oh, that. yeah. Yeah. Uh, did you start speaking right at this moment, or? Um, not really. I didn't really have a, a lot of people to talk to, mm -hmm. so um, I really started interacting with um, native speakers. Well, not really native speakers, but like foreigners. When at my first year at university, mm -hmm. where I was a curator for in, uh, exchange students that would come to Russia to study for their semester abroad. Um, what was your subject matter at university? Sorry? What was your subject matter at university? What did you study? Uh, hospitality management. Uh -huh. Yeah. So, yeah. And later on, when I was uh, working at, the uh, at, um, at this hotel, uh, I also interacted with foreigners a lot. And so, yeah. How many languages did you study in your university? I, I guess there are Oh, yeah, I maybe, had not just I English, but something. No, no. We also had Spanish, Span uh -huh. but yeah, my relationship with Spanish is <laughs> not that great. Though I'm trying to. I'm uh, no. I kind of. I I would like to, um, you know, restart uh, my Spanish. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh, what kind of content do you usually consume now in English? Like, do you watch some YouTube or oh, books um, or? 
Yeah, whatever I watch, whenever I watch a movie or a series, I always watch it in English. Mm -hmm. uh, since seventh grade, by the way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's when I started, was since Tatiana Alexeyevna. Um, yeah, so right now I watch YouTube, I watch movies and series, uh, and I read sometimes. Whenever I read something, I also prefer to read it in English. What was the last book? Wait, I can tell you. I oh, actually started something psychological, but I forgot. I started reading it like the day before yesterday. One moment. Oh, yeah, it's called Come Closer by oh. Ilse Sand. She's Danish, I think. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. kind of a modern, modern book. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's kind of psychology. Mm -hmm. psychology. Do, do you like psychology? It's like, is it your um, hobby? I or? would say yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is something that is really interesting for me, especially like social interactions, um, childhood traumas and stuff like that. Have read some books uh, before about psychology? Is to be honest, I'm not a huge, huge, huge fan mm -hmm. of uh, reading Read. psychology because oh. mm -hmm. it's <laughs> always so com like you have to actually focus. You have to, you know, understand and think and. Uh, so yeah, I'm. I wouldn't say that I read lots of psychology, but I got lots of books on my. On uh, my uh, how about some lectures or maybe some you know content on you some some oh, videos? Oh, I love of course. Sometimes uh, I watch TED talks. Uh, yeah, but I guess that's it. And I also have a few like yeah like YouTube channels that mm -hmm. um, focus on psychology on social interactions. You know, Do you remember like that. the the names of the channels? wait <laughs> I'll also have okay, to look it okay. up um, oh one of my favorite YouTube channels is called it's actually German Kuzgzah something mm, like that I, I know this channel I, like I they are amazing I in 2014 I guess like 6 years ago yeah yeah me too I, I found out about it a few years ago so, so inspiring at, at yes, that time yes yes my mm -hmm. favorite video it's about time you know time oh yeah 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 like the time ones I, I've watched all of their videos mm -hmm. probably twice Mm -hmm. So those are really entertaining and interesting. Uh, they also also cover a lot about psychology. They have a playlist about it's, it's called human stuff. So mm -hmm. yeah, uh, I mostly was like this universe, how it is yeah, going to yeah, yeah. disappear. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what else? Let what me is see. the second channel? Let me see. Let me see. Where's my? Mm, I think something called ASAP Science. They also they pretty much like. Um, they really, uh, they're kind of similar to Kuzguzak, but mm -hmm. a little different. So uh, it's mostly yeah. kind of sci scientific channels, yeah, not just entertainment. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, no, there's also Psych, psych to go that I used to watch, mm -hmm. but it's psych not Yeah, I, I, rem I remember it, but I, I didn't yeah. watch it. I and TED, TED Ed videos are also amazing. I guess pretty much that's it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, if you would start learning language from the beginning what would you change <laughs> <laughs> what i would change you yeah. mean in my learning yeah, process it's like now you have this experience of studying language for like 15 years right or mm. even more yeah so if you well, would start from the beginning is there some or maybe some know, mistakes which you make and now you would like to i don't really think so to mm -hmm. be honest well let uh, i've been learning english without all this oh sorry the, the grammatics and everything I just learned it kind of in the process. Mm -hmm. I was watching lots of movies, films. A huge boost uh, of my vocabulary happened when I started reading. Mm -hmm. It was completely horrible. It was so hard. I remember I was so irritated that I have to um, translate practically every word. Um, but after some time, but the thing is that it, the important thing is to read a book that's actually interesting so that you have a motivation to the continue reading you have a motivation to actually like do you remember the first book what what, what was it? Ooh, oh i'm afraid i'm afraid not <laughs> it was nothing like to to um, it was something stupid did you translate yeah. like every word or did you try to not get to, to guess maybe some, some yeah some well no oh, definitely i was not translating every word there is mm -hmm. no way i have the uh patience to translate mm -hmm. every word no i was translating just the one that i thought are uh, more uh like essential in mm -hmm. the sentence mm -hmm. and the rest i was trying to guess what the meaning of these words is but yeah it, it was lots of words yeah but the thing is that every every author has probably their own like vocabulary and each word kind of repeats um, they use pretty much the same um, 
list of words and they kind of repeat chapter after chapter so you page after page so you learn so the first page like the yeah. next page then you yeah yeah, yeah. you get, translate you, get used it like to it then. you translate it like four or five times then you finally remember mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah all right uh what's your tradition about uh, your current level um now uh i would like to make my english more british british I think, like yes because now that i listen to this uh, pronunciation yes this yes yes mm -hmm. the pronunciation the fancy words and everything my my english is pretty much american mm -hmm. because of the influence of all the shows and youtube that i've been watching um and also of also a huge impact on my english was uh, a very close friend of mine she's from boston so yeah she also taught me uh, some new words and everything and yeah my, my my english is very american i would like to make it more british how, how, uh, how are you going to do that i have no idea <laughs> <laughs> i have no idea watch, watch more british you know, yeah word, yeah british. yeah because that works you know i i noticed that whenever i start uh, watching uh, for, for some period of time i was watching peaky blinders do you know the mm -hmm. yeah i watched a few series and yeah, I, yeah, I didn't yeah, like too episodes. much I yeah stopped. well um, yeah, Peaky Blinders, and then uh, at the time I was um, working in a hotel, and then I so I was using English every day, and I noticed that my speech has become a little oh, bit oh more yeah. British. <laughs> yeah, yeah this so. bit, and yeah. I was like, uh, do, "Would you like a glass of water?" So that yeah. sounds like so amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I can, I can do. I, I struggle really a lot with uh, like pronunciation, intonation, yeah. and it seems. I don't know. Yeah. It kind of came to me naturally. I don't know what it has to. Do. Maybe it has to do with the fact that my first 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 uh, language was Armenian mm -hmm. which has more variety of sounds that are similar to British because in Russian we have more of like you know this uh, consonant sounds and you know um, that are um, they, they differ from mm -hmm. English and in Armenian we have a lot of sounds that are similar to English mm -hmm. so maybe maybe that's that's uh, the reason mm -hmm. okay. uh, on a scale from zero to ten when zero is mm -hmm. kind of uh, somebody who doesn't speak english and tennis like the best english speaker <laughs> like where where are you right now and uh, uh another like kind of additional question do you have a sense of progress uh for the last years in your mm. in your in your english okay well 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 i would say that i am at like 7.58 eight so somewhere there yeah um as for my progress I recently uh, started teaching English, uh -huh. so I finally learned the grammar. <laughs> I've been speaking this whole years without actually understanding what, why I say that. It, my, uh -huh. my language is totally like in natural. Yeah, yeah in uh -huh. intuition. It's based uh -huh. on intuition. I choose a tense based on my intuition because you know all these series that I've watched, all these books that I've read, they are kind of in my memory. I have the structures of sentences. And I guess whenever I speak, it's like my subconscious choosing what to say. Uh, and I don't control that process at all. I just speak whatever my intuition tells Ar aren't me. Aren't you afraid that grammar will make you slower? So you just learn. Oh, yeah, yeah to, be, to be <laughs> honest, to be honest, I am definitely against learning all the grammar and the rules and everything. And some of my students, I have one student, she actually like, she's really into grammar and she asks me all the time all these questions like why do we use this one why do we use that and i'm like i totally i have no idea <laughs> and trust me you, like i i i'm kind of against like learning by heart everything mm -hmm. i'm more into like learn in the process like uh use your um, no I, I wouldn't say that using your intuition all the time is a good is a good uh, advice because all, most of my students they actually have to pass some exams like okay you okay, and everything and I yeah, also they are re required to yes, memorize and those rules. kind of exams they definitely require the knowledge of all the rules and this intuition thing does not always help even though I it I kind of passed IELTS without knowing grammar at all but I think if now if I uh, had had um, IELTS exam now I would have had like a higher a higher mark so no my I, I'm not saying that my technique is like perfect but for, 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 for you it works and yeah it mm -hmm. works for me I'm I'm okay with it um, but yeah if of course if you need it more academical then of course you need to focus on grammar and rules and getting into it 
But once again, like learning everything by heart, is it worth it? There, all of us are different. So mm. all, 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 there are like very structural people who need to know everything like exactly and on point. And there is me who is like, I do whenever I feel something, you know, based on intuition. And that works for me and that's fine. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think everyone should find something that suits uh, them. What's about the progress? Like, do you Oh, yeah, progress. Yeah. Well, yeah, as I said, I started uh, teaching English. So now I know the grammar, kind of. At least I know how to use tenses. Uh, I know I remembered all the, you know, conditional senses and everything and all that grammar. So, yeah, I would say that in the past, uh, what do we take year? My English has improved in a way, even though I use it less. Like I used to work in a hotel, so I used to use my English every day at the university. I used to use my English every day. Um, now, yeah, I still use English every day because now mm -hmm. I teach, <laughs> to at least try to. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, this kind of lingu linguistic skills like speaking, listening, mm -hmm. reading, mm -hmm. writing, thinking, like in which proportion do you think they uh, like you prefer to develop them like your your sense what, what, what's more most important for you and was what is less important Ooh, that's really hard because all of them together actually like in combination they make a good language yeah but some I people like somebody prefer to read more somebody mm, prefer to watch yeah. more well yeah as you said as you prefer i mean well it's like uh, you you're for me you're, yeah, for me yeah, personally your experience mm, in my experience i guess i got the most uh the most advantage from reading and listening because reading helped me with vocabulary a lot and also with all the sentence uh, constructions you know to have them like a natural way of acquiring grammar that you just uh, yeah. read and then yeah yeah yeah, yeah. reproduce yeah exactly exactly um and listening in a sense of like watching a series watching um movies it also helps it helps to actually perceive the language mm -hmm. um, and of course it also helps with pronunciation as i said i had this whenever i, I watched uh, peaky blinders i suddenly had i was kind of mimicking the way mm -hmm. they speak on the show and that happened like i didn't control that as well it just happened uh, so what 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 you hear it always stays in your subconscious at least that's how it works i'm like a, i'm like a parrot whatever i hear mm -hmm. that's what i like Say speak it, yeah yeah <laughs> That's cool. So I guess reading, listening, um, as, as to writing, I'm not quite sure that it, it writing, it's uh, the same with my uh, students. I use it to check their uh, knowledge, like their level. I'm not sure you can learn from writing. Mm -hmm. It's really hard to learn from writing. Writing is more of like it shows uh, your current knowledge, your level right now. Um, whenever I want to check uh, my students, um, like how how well they understand the topic th that we're revising, I give them a writing task, a writing task or a speaking task, so that I see how well mm -hmm. they understood it. So I, I don't think writing is a good tool to learn English. It, it's a good way to like when you write it down and then you give it to someone who understands and they give you your mistakes, like point at your mistakes. In that mm -hmm. sense, it's good. Mm, but yeah, that requires someone else to to look into it because it's extremely hard to analyze your own writing. And no, no, I, I do that. Like I'm writing daily daily journals, and yeah, I check them after a year, oh, for great. example, and I just oh. I write them in my you know in a notebook, mm -hmm. and after after a year uh, mm -hmm. with uh, current knowledge, I just uh, go and I try to type it on the computer I and see. see like it's. I, s I perceive it in the it's it's my, my writing changed mm -hmm. after a year and I see all mistakes uh, I don't see everything but I see lots of new ways to express the same idea to put it in a, you know but it, yeah the, it's 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 very hard I think yeah yeah and yeah uh, that's a, that's a good thing to do uh, uh, do you have some special methods which you use to teach your students oh special methods. And how did you like tell me more about this process of teaching Oh like yeah. How did you came up with this idea to, to teach people? Well, uh, the idea was easy <laughs> because I was sitting at home, uh, not having a job, uh, mm -hmm. not doing anything, and I, as I, I always liked English, it was like my my passion. 
uh, from a very young age. I always liked it. And it was the only subject at school I truly enjoyed. So I was like, I, I always, I, I always understood that um, I want to, English is like a huge thing I like, and I always wanted to do something related to English. Um, and then I thought, why not, why not try to teach? Because that's easy. You can, it's, it's very mm, convenient in a mm -hmm. sense that you, you make your own timetable, you make your own schedule, you can control it. You don't have to, you know, be there. You don't have to sit in an office from nine to six. You, you're basically in control and it's also easy. All you need for it is your laptop and some good internet connection. Um, Do you teach mostly on, on the internet? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, 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 always, no. Mm -hmm. I, <laughs> uh, yeah, it's uh, only, uh, it's always internet, yeah. Um, yeah, and then there's this pandemic thing, and um, it's 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 uh, convenient, and I actually enjoy the process. Of course, not with every student, but all the students that I have right now, they are amazing. Do you have a special program for every student, or is... Uh, yeah, of course, of course, a uh, special program, uh, um based on their level on their specific like um, abilities on their interests mm -hmm. so yeah of course i make specialized program mm -hmm. for maybe everyone. some secrets which only you know how oh i honestly <laughs> i don't i don't i'm no? i'm a bad teacher in a sense that i'm not really like a teach yeah teacher. so you, know, you communicate communicate uh, yes yes mm -hmm. i can i don't really force anyone to do homework if my students don't do homework i'm like Stuff. All right, Your then you don't have motivation yeah. mm -hmm. to. Mm -hmm. uh, I know all the students I have. I guess I'm just lucky because all the students I have, they are. I look at them and I see myself when mm -hmm. I was like in seventh grade, eighth grade, with this, you know, with their eyes. They love our lessons. Uh, of course, not all the students are like that. I used to have some students who would be, you know, this. They wouldn't do homework. They would skip our lessons. They wouldn't like it. It's just the thing. The thing is that I guess they lack the motivation. Mm -hmm. but now do you I do something to motivate them? Do you, do you try to encourage I, them? Of person? course, mm -hmm. I try to. Um, I, I learn about the interests they have. For example, if someone likes sports, I'm not going to bore them with books mm -hmm. or I don't know with uh, theater or art Classical or literature. something. <laughs> yeah, I would. I would choose something more related to sports. Something you know more active. And if I see that someone uh, actually enjoys something like uh, about books and reading i would choose some topics that i would cover that uh, of course i'm i'm not uh, only doing that i diverse our you know uh, lessons but yeah if if someone if something is uh, if i see that something is boring i, I avoid that mm -hmm. of course. Uh, yeah. how, how do how do you motivate your students how like, do i motivate yeah. them you know i wouldn't say that i like i have a goal of motivating them i just do my job i try to do it as as well as i can um do i i put a lot of energy uh, yeah. do you have some students for example who are forced to study by their parents and they, you kind of sense immediately that they don't it's not what they yes. want and you yeah. still you need to do this job to, to persuade them to you know what i think i believe i don't do something that i don't like <laughs> it's uh -huh. <laughs> unless oh, i have to uh -huh. unless i totally have to uh -huh. Um, so I used to have a student who obviously didn't want that. He didn't need that. It's just his mom that forced him. And I, I refused to take that student mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. he took too much energy of me. That's why I'm saying I'm not a, I'm not a good teacher. I don't do it. Uh, I'm, I guess I'm a little bit egoistic in that sense mm -hmm. because uh, whenever I feel that we don't have that connection with the student, I'm not forcing myself, I'm not forcing him. Um, I just decide to, okay, let's uh, stop this. Let's not, um, you know. Um, it is so fr yeah. frustrating, right? If you just yeah. try to teach somebody and you see it doesn't work. And yeah. Like yeah. You can take responsibility yeah. for somebody else and you try yeah. to do that. It doesn't work. You yeah. just get yeah. um, frustrated. Mm, so yeah, but I do that rarely. Mm -hmm. uh, I in my uh, experience, I've been teaching for like what seven months, eight months, I guess. I only did it like twice. Mm, okay. Um, what kind of platforms do you use? I talk you, you know. So uh, sorry. Uh, what kind of platforms? Where Skype. Sk yeah, uh, uh, Skype, but Skype. Uh, maybe some special uh, teaching programs. Like how, how did you get students? 
Oh, uh, where, 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 you where know, did you get it's, it's the word of speech, I guess, Armenian. Ah, okay, so uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's not, you, you, you don't uh, sign up to special you yeah, know, organi- no. organization, no, no. like teaching, yeah. t- teaching company or something like that. Well, yeah. that's, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, another question about motivation, like yeah. not about teaching, but in general, like if uh, somebody wants to study but don't have motivation like do you have some advice how to mm. motivate yourself to, s- to study language you see when you need a motivation to study language it means that you don't need to study language. yeah <laughs> you know I don't know that's a good question like so that's a good like I guess question where motivation comes from um, um, in my personal experience, as I said, I don't force students. I do my job. I try to do it as well as I can. Mm-hmm. I am, you know, uh, I'm pretty outgoing. I try to engage them. I try to talk to them. I try to choose the uh, topics that interest them. So I do my best. And if it's still not enough to motivate them, then I'm sorry. That's that's all I can do. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I, I'm not like, no, it is my job to make Peter like English. He has to. No, it, I mean, I do my best. I try to. If that doesn't work, that's fine. But for some of my students, it works very well, and mm-hmm. they really like it. So, okay. Yeah. Uh, what do you think about the role of English in globalization? Like now, mm. it's just so huge. Everybody wants to speak English, and uh, yeah. like how how it's gonna grow? Like your intuition about the future of English? Uh, future of English. I mean, it is the international language. Um, so... This is going to replace all languages in... No. 260 or something. I think Chinese could Chinese replace. Chinese replace. <laughs> Why Chinese? Yeah, I think Chinese is huge right now at the moment. It's, it's way higher to yeah. study Chinese oh, than yes. to study English. Yes, yes, yes. Um, 227 yeah. basic characters and then there's like thousands <laughs> yes 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 chinese is very hard for um, four tones you know I, I've, st- I've tried to study chinese there are four oh tones really? and the same word if you say for example ma so it may mean f- if you say ma it's it's one thing if you say ma it's another if you say ma it's oh <laughs> you know, if you say ma for four different tones. And <laughs> oh, sounds <laughs> you horrible. Ha, you, ha, you have to f- have some. Yeah, no, no, I think, yeah, it's, it's, it's great. Um, I think, yeah, the uh, competition for English is Chinese because uh, with all the Chinese market growing, it could replace, it could become like a second. Um, could. Uh, I don't know. My, my, my politics uh, professor at university, she would always say, students you should learn chinese chinese mm-hmm. is the language of the future mm-hmm. um as for english i th- that is 100 percent international language and it plays a huge role in globalization um so yeah i think the role of english is uh, pretty important and i don't think it will uh, become any less in the near future so yeah uh, what do you think about education Mm-hmm. You know, now we have some, for example, in Russia we have kind of, usually people complain about mm-hmm. the Russian education system <laughs> that in terms of studying English, I c- w- people whom I talk to, most of them say that in their school yeah. one or two people could uh, manage to study language and some say that there was nobody who could even, even s- not just yeah. sp- even speak, but even to understand, even to yeah. find an interest. Oh, that's uh, it's a huge problem. I think the most important thing is, um, okay, I'm going to speak from my point of view. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so uh, I think the teacher plays a huge role in this in the educational process. Um, so yeah, uh, a good teacher. And the problem of Russian education is that teachers are not motivated um because okay that's a huge thing that i really don't want to get into the whole system and everything um but basically yeah the teachers they don't have uh any motivation i I was lucky i was truly lucky to have uh, the best teacher in the world 
she was she really loved her job she loved english she loved teaching english we would even have our uh, desks at the uh, at, in our classroom they would be in a circle so that we would face each other she would give some interesting um, homework as to tell make a presentation about your favorite um, movie so she would do something really interesting it was not just you know these rules and to learn and uh, stuff like that um, she she would make the process entertaining so I think not every teacher is like mm -hmm. that, of course. And um, yeah, I think the, the, the problem is the teachers. Yeah, but uh, besides teachers uh, yeah. who have their systems, right? So teacher, yeah. sometimes a teacher wants to help their, stu their students, but still yeah. uh, they must teach a certain program. So you yeah. like in five grade, you need yeah. to know this. In second grade, you need to know this. And everybody's mm -hmm. kind of like... You don't have an individualistic approach mm -hmm. so you must mm -hmm. uh, you have a group and you need like the mm, whole group must go the yeah. same course and for yeah. many people it's inconvenient they uh, can yeah but i think there is still but teacher still it's like very important so if yeah. there's a passionate teacher yeah. i think there is nothing wrong with the program at uh -huh. least when i recall our study program uh, uh they place too much in uh in like grammar yeah so yeah you must exactly grammar, I think grammar, that's, grammar. that's the thing that's the thing yes they um pay too much attention to the grammar part of it whereas they don't give any practical use of the language and i think i just realized it right now <laughs> i think yeah learning learning all the theory is okay but it's useless unless you give your students a chance to actually use them like in practice it like i i just now realized that tatiana Xiana would always give us some um le like um, tasks uh, exercises tasks where we need to uh, speak like we just need to talk and speak and put all the knowledge that we she just gave us into practice so i think that also is a very good approach and standards like another mm -hmm. quest like another point for example in native in our native language we mm -hmm. still do lots of mistake when we speak yeah. and nobody uh tells you like oh you're wrong all the time uh, nobody yeah. corrects you but in english it's like your second language you start speaking and you must speak with perfect grammar as soon as you no. make a mistake you are immediately yeah. like kind of shamed and yeah, uh, yeah many yeah, people yeah. just r have struggles with that they can speak because they think that in order to speak you must speak always correct always right mm. so you, sh you are not allowed to make mistakes yeah well you know with the mistake correction um for example i correct only the mistakes for example i have a student and for the past three lessons we were revising let's say present perfect and then uh, she m says something and she makes a mistake in present perfect and that's the mistake that i would correct but if she wants to make a conditional sentence that we did not revise yet and she makes a mistake i'm not going to correct that because mm -hmm. she doesn't know that yet Mm -hmm. that's uh, that's um that's a topic we did not revise it so with yeah with the mistake correction you have to be very uh, uh, cautious because sometimes of course it can um, you know make the student feel bad and be like oh no i don't understand yeah. it can discourage them yeah so yeah you have to be uh, that also some a, a topic that requires some individual approach uh, we had a conversation with andy uh, like a month ago a little mm -hmm. bit more and he said related to this question that yeah. he tries to remember in a like in, he was a teacher he works like yeah. a teacher yeah. and he doesn't correct mistakes in the process but at the end when the lesson mm, that like yeah. a, at the end he just tells the student yes yes so. that's also a good a good thing to do yeah i do that sometime as well but the things that you need to write it down mm -hmm. uh, because yeah you you may forget uh, that later but yeah yeah uh that's also a good thing like you write it down and then at the end you uh at each lesson at the end of each lesson we have this you know feedback thing mm -hmm. where we make some conclusion and you know yeah that's that's a good strategy as well okay uh, our speaking club uh, yeah <laughs> let's talk a little bit about this like sure. do you think it's a good uh, motivation for people just to join the speaking club and uh, you know just come here practice their language 
Mm-hmm. Like you may st- you may study at home, right? But mm-hmm. uh, to to get more motivation, you just participate in a speaking club, and every week you have this opportunity to communicate with many people. Mm-hmm. Yes, of course. But I think the one thing that uh, discourages a lot of my friends that I tell them like, "Hey, you have this English uh, club. Why don't you join?" They're like, "Oh, my English is too bad. Mm-hmm. I I'm not confident enough." So yeah, uh, also not not everyone would be you know confident enough uh, about their level to come um, and to be honest uh, coming to an English club in my personal opinion requires at least some I mean if you don't know the language at all I'm not sure it would be beneficial mm-hmm. for you however yeah if you have some basic knowledge that would be of course English clubs are amazing I we used to have one at our university I, I always like them so yeah, that's yeah. an interesting point I guess we need <laughs> to make another English speaking club f- exactly for the beginners. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> like yeah, don't nobody yeah. feel uh, uncomfortable because yeah, some yeah. people speak very yeah. well and they don't speak at all. Yeah. That's why probably like this I, I'm yeah. working now on this course of lectures in English, mm. English from scratch. Yeah, that I would guess be in great. the future we'll have something like that uh, in Innovation Cultural Center. Right. I'll ask you some philosophical questions. Ooh, okay. <laughs> are you are you ready to talk about Okay, well, like yeah, why not? No, why some not? You, I may say like it's a What's the meaning of life? <laughs> okay, the meaning of life. You know, I have uh, watched very recently the cartoon. I I can't really call it a cartoon. Mm-hmm. This cartoon is like it's not enough for this. I would call it like a movie, a film. Uh it's called Soul. Have mm. you watched it? It's a Pixar. It's a Pixar cartoon, pretty similar to Inside Out. Basically, the main topic of it. It's for kids, but the main topic of it is like the meaning of life mm-hmm. and why. Uh, what's the purpose of life? And the story is about a uh, music teacher who is kind of a little bit lost. He has this. Um, okay, I, I'm not going to spoil everything, mm-hmm. so no spoilers, um, because that's a great cartoon. Anyone who's listening to it right now should go and watch it right afterwards, if you haven't yet. Um, so yeah, there's this music teacher, and uh, his um, desire for his whole life was to be in a band, in a jazz band. He's a jazz man, so uh, he's uh, he always wanted to be in a jazz band, and then he finally he finally gets that um, he gets into a jazz band in a good one, and then um, okay, I'm not going to continue because <laughs> that's that's <laughs> where yeah the spoilers would come. And um, okay, no, I, I I I'm not really sure I can how much I can tell so that not to spoil anything for the watchers for the wo- those who would like to watch it. So the, the those who will watch it first watch the movie and then get back to the <laughs> podcast. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, <laughs> basically, <laughs> basically, it's the main the main point of the cartoon is that um, every s- according to the cartoon every soul gets kind of their uh, passion something they like. Uh, it can be music, it can be architecture, mm. it can be... I, I, I also thought the point is to discover what it is, right? Yes, <laughs> the point is to discover what it is. But uh, then there is this one soul who has been there for a very, very centuries and still hasn't discovered what her purpose is, what her desire is. And then by some... Um, you know, by some accidents, she actually gets to Earth and she has to leave and she realizes that there is kind of no purpose. Mm -hmm. The purpose is to enjoy the process. So to leave, like enjoying all the little moments, it's, you know, it's this basic thing that everyone knows. It's the basic truth Mm -hmm. that I think everyone kind of knows. But nobody thinks about it. Exactly. Mm -hmm. No one really thinks about it. And then we, um, there is basically the um the point of the whole cartoon is to enjoy all these little moments enjoy the sun the laughter the music because whenever you get all these um you set a goal you get that goal and then what yeah and then there is like no meaning exactly in- another as well. goal you need another goal uh-huh. and it can go over and over and over again but as long as you focus um, on the process you would process just, yeah, yeah. Y- you need to and unless you focus on the process, it's all going to be like, you will be, um, you know, you won't enjoy it. Mm-hmm. You you get you get your goal and then what? 
Yeah, so I, yeah. I guess the same thing with languages, right? So if you set a goal, I want to like speak English like a native speaker, yeah. and yeah. you don't like the process, so you try to do that, nothing works. Of course. And if you just of enjoy course. the process, you don't like you may exactly. You you might just yep. study for thirty twenty minutes a day yep. and be yep. happy yep. and even you know get yeah. get something from the process, not from the goal. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to this question, the meaning of life, oh, I think about it uh, way too many times. <laughs> um, <Seriously>? But <laughs> yeah, but I guess I came to a realization that there is no meaning. Honestly, I have no idea who we are, uh, who am I right now? Like this whole, I mean, I've watched all the videos of Kuz Gesagt like <laughs> 20, <laughs> I don't know, way too many times. I question everything and not just Kuz Gesagt in general. Um, so I... I came to a realization that there is not much meaning. It's just that you just live and s enjoy the process, and um, yeah, mm -hmm. set uh, do do whatever you like. Set some goals, but achieve them. Not just to achieve them, but to you know, um, educate, learn something new. You know, enjoy it yeah. in the process. Sure, that's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Satya, thank you so much for our conversation. It was a great pleasure to talk Thanks to you. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. yeah. Guys, subscribe to our channel to yeah. share <laughs> this video. And right come comments. to the meetings. Yeah, on and come Saturdays. to the speaking club. Sundays uh, at the Innovation Cultural Center and Saturdays, Moskovsky 221.